All right, so let's just delve right into ADHD. I'm sure you know what that is, so I'm not gonna explain it. Clinical studies, uh, especially over in Russia, um, in my own personal um, observations, this combination of pine bark extract and rhodiola extract do phenomenal wonders for individuals uh, suffering with ADHD. But without a doubt, when someone comes up to me and they have ADHD, immediately the first things they need to get on is rhodiola and uh, pycnogenol or pine bark extract. Okay, so just a little preface. I'm gonna use some big words here. Don't be frightened by them. I'm gonna try and explain them uh, and make them not so complicated because this is kind of complicated language. We're really gonna be talking about superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, peroxide, peroxynitrite, dopamine, serotonin, and uh, norepinephrine. <laughs> now, for some people, those words that I just mentioned is enough. They can, ah, oh, they go, aha, so that's what the issue is. That's it, okay, so let's break it down. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention accelerated glycation and their end products. <laughs> okay, so just to make it simple, essentially ADHD is inflammation of the brain and more specifically a particular spot of the brain called the reticular activating system. The brain has certain compartments that specialize in processing very unique bits of data. One part of your brain processes vision, one part of your brain processes what, what, what uh, you smell, another part of your brain processes, oh, you know what, I feel like we need to eat now. You know, and, and anyway, all of that operates as a holistic totality that the uh, sum of, of which is thought, it's consciousness, it's, it's reasoning, it's, it's deduction. Now, we have, you know, millions and billions and quadrillions of bits of data coming into our uh, senses at every second. Then there's a particular part of the brain that specializes in kind of filtering that stuff out and saying, okay, we need to pay attention to this over here. I get this, I, I hear you, you know, I don't really need to pay attention to you right now. There's a, we're driving, so we really need to focus on the road. You know, there's a part of our brain that does that, and that's the reticular activating system. Now, what happens is when the blood flow to that area gets a little constricted, or when our internal antioxidant network is a little askew, isn't quite working efficiently, this part, this system, this part of our, our brain starts to suffer a little bit. And when it suffers, we literally have a hard time concentrating on and focusing on what we want to concentrate and focus on. Now, this is half the story. The other half of the story is, what, even if that's working correctly, we have to have the appropriate uh, neurotransmitters in order for the rest of the brain to communicate efficiently. That's where the dopamine and the serotonin and the, and the norepinephrine come in. So when we want to focus on something, we need that reticular activating system. It's in the lower part of our brain. If, if you're familiar with anatomy at, at all, it, it connects you know, your spinal cord with your cerebrum and cerebellum. All of that converges in that one spot and we get alignment. We get direction. We get purpose. Now, let's say, I don't know, your, your, your wife's talking to you or... Uh, you're talking to your boyfriend and you know they're not really paying attention to you what you're saying or you know whatever even if that reticular activating system is working correctly and it's saying hey you need to focus hey you need to focus hey you need to pay attention be calm if you don't have the dopamine to actually maintain that impulse of concentration it's not going to you're not going to be concentrated if you have the dopamine, but you don't have the serotonin, let's say, you know, your wife's kind of mad at you or you're, whatever the case may be, there's a little bit of stress there. There's a little bit of anxiety. There could be a little bit of depression there. Ooh, I don't want to focus, but, you know, I have that dopamine. My reticular activating system is working. If I don't have the serotonin to keep me calm and kind of give me an auspicious attitude, I'm not going to want to focus. I'm going to start to become inflamed internally. So I need that serotonin. I need that dopamine working together with my reticular activating system so that I can stay focused and I'm calmly focused. Now, I have to have sustained energy 
to allow those neurotransmitters to function and the reticular activating system to function, to be awake. That's where that norepinephrine comes in. All that must work efficiently at the exact same time just for me to be able to focus on whatever I want to focus on and be calmly focused and hopefully in an auspicious attitude at the same time. Hopefully that wasn't too complicated. And this is the, the, the part where we use rhodiola. The Russians have done excellent research showing that, wow, you know what? It, it begins to realign the dopamine and the serotonin, that norepinephrine, and then at the same time, it starts stimulating the reticular activating system, that part of our brain that causes us to focus and to stay focused. So we have our neurotransmitters, so the information coming out of the reticular activating system can actually function and shoot its messages out to the other parts of our brain. That is the first part of ADHD. The second part that we really, really need to work on is controlling inflammation. Um, and in particular, free radical information, inflammation. A uh, free radical, what is that? Well, basically, it's, a, it's a, a compound in our body that just likes to rip electrons from wherever it can. Okay, so an Easy analogy. So let's say there's a skyscraper, okay, cool, skyscraper, and I go to the basement somewhere, and I take one of those pillar things that they bang into the ground, and I just rip it out. And all of a sudden, that skyscraper, it might start wobbling like this because I just ripped out one of its fundamental building blocks. Well, essentially, a free radical in our body does the same thing, only with electrons. Okay, so let's speed up a little bit. This is where pine bark comes in. Um, okay, so basically there's a class of natural compounds called flavonoids or polyphenols. What do they do? Okay, and, and uh, how do they help us with ADHD? Okay, so I'm going to use some more big words here. And just if you have to watch this video more than once, by all means, do it. Uh, I'm going to try and make it very, very easy. So we have natural uh, antioxidant networks inside of our body that are always present. Um, two major ones are called glutathione peroxidase and superoxide dismutase. Now, something that is very, very common uh, with individuals who have ADHD is they are deficient in these two fundamentally awesome, powerful antioxidants. Okay. And so why does that matter? Why does it happen to show up with an ADHD? Well, this is why. Okay, so it kind of has to do with accelerated glycation. And I'm sorry if this is complicated, but it kind of has to do with accelerated glycation. So when we eat normal food, we're going to get a spontaneous combining of sugar to protein in our body. It doesn't matter if the, the food is raw or the food is cooked. But accelerated glycation is a natural process. Now, this is where it gets dangerous from environmental factors, um, from maybe you have, you have food sensitivities, not really an allergy, but you're sensitive to a food, so you're not really sure how it affects you or even if it does affect you. Um, or it could just be a crappy diet, you know, uh, food that comes in a box. You, you know what it is. I mean, just really, really poor diet. Those things cause an increased amount of accelerated glycation, which is just a, uh, a phenomenon of sugar binding to protein that we don't control. That's the problem. We don't control it. Now, we have things in us to break that apart. However, if there's too much at any given time in our body, it shuts off our production of superoxide dismutase. Now, uh, superoxide, what is that? That is, it's, it's actually, it's a natural free radical that our immune system makes, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a byproduct of uh, the production of energy in and of itself. We create this superoxide. So we have an enzyme that we need to break this superoxide down with. It's called superoxide dismutase. Um, when we have too much accelerated glycation going on in our body, it irritates our cells in such a way that we stop producing superoxide dismutase. Now, 
This is uh, uh, an interesting place, and this is where the flavonoids come in. So we have to have appropriate blood flow going to, to all the little nooks and crannies of our body, especially the reticular activating system. What helps to control that is the natural gas that our body produces called nitric oxide. Another big word. Now, when we have uh, a handicapped ability because of the accelerated glycation to produce the superoxide dismutase, something else happens. So when we naturally want to produce nitric oxide, and what does that do? It dilates our blood vessels. It helps bl our, our, our blood vessels expand so more blood can go to any given area of our body. Now, when we have less superoxide dismutase, that means we're going to have more superoxide. And superoxide likes to bind with nitric oxide and forms a new molecule, which is a, a pure poison to us. And some individuals are more sensitive to this pure poison. It's a uh, peroxy uh, nitrite. It just wreaks havoc and it shuts down our glutathione production. It just eats it right up. Um, it also eats our vitamin E right up. It eats our vitamin C right up. So those glutathione, vitamin E, vitamin C are in our body continually to be natural antioxidants. Um, a, basically, a free radical is a pro-oxidant. <laughs> I'm throwing around all of these, these you know, unfamiliar terms. I'm sorry if you're... Uh, if you're just like blown away, like, man, I have no idea what you're talking about. Let me just bring it to home really, really quick. So this is where pine bark or pycnogenol comes in. Uh, flavonoids regulate our nitric oxide production. So even if we have a lot of accelerated glycation going on in our body, those flavonoids will help keep nitric oxide in check. Not only that, they will eat up those or, or, or neutralize, dispel um, some of those uh, accelerated glycation in products. They will revitalize our natural glutathione peroxidase, a, a very, very powerful antioxidant that's going to start bringing down inflammation in the brain as well as the rest of our body. Um, it, these, the pine bark extract, because it's rich in the flavonoids, just, I know I just said it, but I'm just gonna make it simpler again. Help to regulate blood flow, especially to our brain. It's, uh, the flavonoids are gonna calm down internal inflammation. Um, they're gonna start reactivating our superoxide dismutase, which is a good thing. And they're gonna start uh, reactivating our glutathione peroxidase which is a good thing and they're gonna it's gonna help start to calm down so much accelerated glycation that is basically it <laughs> we got through it okay so you know just in summation rhodiola is going to nourish and stimulate the reticular activating system that part of the brain that is responsible for keeping us focused now rhodiola is also going to stimulate dopamine serotonin and norepinephrine those two those three things are neurotransmitters that help relay the message of from that part of the brain that keeps us focused now if that part of the brain doesn't get good blood flow because our nitric oxide production is a little bit off or because it's just is so inflamed from the free radical damage occurring the pycnogenol or pine bark extract is going to superbly neutralize that and uh, I've just seen such great results I'm telling you within 72 hours almost like a, somebody's a totally new person like you can have a conversation with them and they're like keeping focused the whole time and you know they're not you know their eyes aren't going everywhere or they don't like constantly interrupt anyway I've digressed awesome products for ADHD you really need to check them out